Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's live broadcast, Accelerating Bioproduction Using XBCHO Stable Production Medium, presented by Shreya Lowmaster, Scientist 2 in Cell Biology at Thermo Fisher Scientific. I'm Susie Valdez of Lab Roots, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. We're delighted to bring you this educational web seminar presented by Lab Roots and sponsored by Thermo Fisher Scientific. For more information about our sponsor, visit www.thermofisher.com. Before we begin, I'd like to remind everyone that this event is interactive. We encourage you to participate by submitting as many questions as you want at any time you want during the presentation. Just click on that Ask a Question box located on the far left of your screen, type the questions into the drop-down bo box that appear on the screen, and we'll answer as many questions as we have time for at the end of the presentation. If you have any trouble seeing or hearing the presentation, just click on that Ask a Question box and let us know you're having a problem. Please join me now in welcoming our presenter, Shreya Lomaster. I will now turn the presentation over to her. Welcome, Shreya. Hi, thank you for that presentation and introduction. So again, my name is Shreya Lomaster. Today I will be speaking about our newest product, the XBCHO Stable Production Medium. So here's the overall agenda. Today I'll be focusing on the transient to stable solutions for CHO cells and focusing and highlighting on one main pain point. How can you seamlessly transition from a research scale into a commercial scale process? Followed by a highlight on the transient expression versus a stable production workflow. And then a case study that we performed of how we created a high producing XBCHOS stable clone and concluded with a summary. So this is the transient to stable solution. So currently researchers are demanding higher titers and transient systems. The transient CHO systems are an emerging alternative over HEC-293 systems. Currently on the market, there is the XBCHO expression system kit. This is a kit that will enable you to have transient expression pools used in the research scale only. Once you go through your stable clone development process and into your production phase, that is when you can transition into the XBCHO stable production medium, again, for commercial scale production. These two products are completely integrated into one system, creating a one solution for you. <clears throat> so this is highlighting, again, the XBCHO expression system kit that is out on the market as well. This kit, again, is for enabling transient expression and producing high titers. But the most important part is it uses the high-density XBCHOS host cell line. Within the expression system kit, depending on the protocol you choose to use, there are three protocols, the standard, high titer, and max titer protocol. The standard is a more simplistic and faster. High titer is in between. And then the max titer is the longest and requires the most complexity. This depends on different temperature shifts, applied and necessary for your protein of choice. But irregardless of which uh, protocol you choose, you can see that these high density XPHOS host cell lines are higher in titer production in the transient system in comparison to our competitors, as well as our XB293. And this would be the same exact cells used for your stable clone development needs. <clears throat> This is a complete CHO transient expression system that exists again on the market today. The XBCHOS cells that I just mentioned are a higher producer and select for higher transfection efficiency. Paired with that is the XBFectamine CHO transfection kit. This is a higher efficiency lipid-based transfection kit. And again, paired with this is the XBCHO expression medium. <clears throat> this is the transfection medium that is optimized for your XBCHOS cells as well as optimized to work with the XBFectamine kit to give you excellent transfection efficiency and higher titers. And these are all three available within the XBCHO expression system kit. And they're currently on the market for transient expression. So these first three components are also used for your stable clone development. You can transition into our recently launched commercial scale-up medium at any point post-transfection, which is a stable production medium. Again, this is integrated into the XBCHO family of products. The XBCHO stable production medium 
is available in liquid as well as AGT. AGT is our advanced granulation technology powder, which is a dry granulated material that I will speak about shortly. And it is great for shipping and storage needs. <clears throat> and from this point forward, I will be referring to XPCHO expression medium as expression medium and XPCHO stable production medium as stable production medium. So again, I just mentioned that EGT, the dry format, gives you simplicity to help your streamline scale up. The key benefits of this are that it is auto pH. You simply add water and it will get you to the correct auto pH and auto osmo setting. It has a fast, fast solubility and mix time. It also has a dust-free addition to your tank. Um, the granulation allows this. And there's minimal filtration pressure buildup. And again, you don't have to have too much space to store this. This will still go into your two to eight degree refrigerator but the powder will take up much less room than liquid would. <clears throat> and again, XBCHO stable production medium is available in AGT and gives you these time-saving benefits. Now that you have an idea of the integrated XBCHO family of products, I would like to focus on a pain point and a typical workflow for stable clone development. So this is the stable clone development and it's a clone process to scale up into your larger buyer production processes. First, you begin with your target selection with your pool, followed by your stable clone development. After stable clone development, you would normally go into a medium screening and optimization phase. Generally speaking, you would use a medium that is optimized for your cloning process, and once you've cloned, you would transition into a production medium in your manufacturing process. Most of the time, these two products are not integrated with each other. For this reason, it will take much longer to adapt your cells and can take up to an average of six months in order to adapt your cells, and that's the point that you can go into scaling up into your larger buyer production needs. With XBCHO's stable production medium, scientists can completely bypass this medium screening and optimization step. Again, the reason for this is you eliminate it because it is an integrated XBCHO system. These are a family of products that are designed to work together that eliminates the step of needing to adapt your cells. You can simply go straight into your scale-up needs in a larger bioreactor. These are comparing the two workflows. So the transition into the XPCHO stable production medium will be highlighted. First, the expression system kit is used for the transient workflow. So you can see that the expression medium is used through the entirety of the transient workflow. You begin with the transfection phase with your vector of choice and the transfection reagent. And depending on the protocol you choose to use, you add an enhancer and feed or apply a temperature shift. And then on day 14, you would harvest your titer. On day 14, once you harvest your titer, your cells are not at their peak viable cell density or viability, nor are they at their peak protein production. And for this reason, it's important to highlight that it's one transfection per transient production. If you would like more harvest, you would have to completely repeat this entire 14-day process. Whereas in the stable workflow, again, you use the XBCHO expression system kit for your transfection, and for transfection, you use the expression medium, again, with your vector of choice and your transfection reagent. But upon transfection and right after, you can use XPCHO stable production medium. It's important to note that stable production medium is not optimized for high transfection efficiency, so it is recommended to use at any point post-transfection. <clears throat> and then once you go through that, you go into your selection phases, and then you go into clone selection. Once you select your clone, you can put down a master cell bank for multiple productions. This master cell bank is very, very beneficial, and the reason for this is once you go through this process, while it is longer up front, you have a master cell bank of your high producing stable clone. And you can go into your scale up needs multiple times repeat repeatedly without having to repeat this workflow. So it saves time in the long run. So this is comparing the transient and stable production with the product. So transient expression uses the XBCHOS cells as well as the XB-CHO expression medium, which is a transfection medium, and then the xb fectamine cho transfection kit. It's important to highlight that the stable production uses 
the XBHOS high density cells that have a high transfection efficiency. And currently, they're available as non CGMP cells. However, you can license them for your commercial needs by contacting outlicensing at thermofisher.com, or you can decide to wait until they launch later this year. And again, the XBCHO expression medium is used for transfection, along with the XBFectamine CHO transfection kit. And at this point, this is when we introduce the XBCHO stable production medium. Again, once you have your stable clone and you've performed the transfection, it will support your stable clone scale-up needs. <clears throat> so now that I've introduced you to our integrated XBCHO family of products, I would like you like to walk you through a case study of how we developed a high producing stable clone. So this is our case study of a high producing XBHOS stable clone. You start with sawing an XBHOS stable bank and performing stable transfection. At that point, you would go through a selection phase. In our case, we went through two selection phases in order to select the integrated clone expressing your gene of interest. We followed this by using limited dilution cloning. This is what we used. We also know there are other systems available on the market that are also viable options, but this is our proof of concept and this is what we decided to use. And then we followed it by clone screening in the primary, secondary, and tertiary in order to see what sort of productivity assessment we received. And finally, we followed this by a stability assessment to check to see if the stable clone is producing a higher titer without losing expression along the way. <clears throat> so this is the stable clone selection. Before I get into this, I would like you to look at the bottom right of the image for the overall workflow overview. And the part that is grayed out is the part that I am focusing on. So it starts at the top left of that small image and then goes to the right back down and all the way back to the left. So if there's any confusion, it is on the bottom right of the screen. So this is a selection process that will help to get diverse pools to increase your chances of a high producing stable clone. Selection one was a low antibiotic pressure. And once we received higher than or greater than 85% viability, we proceeded into selection two. Once they recovered, we went into selection two and this is a higher antibiotic pressure, and once they're greater than 90% viability, we followed it by limited dilution cloning. So this is a closer look at our limited dilution cloning. This is our proof of concept and feasibility studies, which resulted in a stable clone. As you can see, we go through the XBHOS pool, and then we play it at half a cell per well in 96 well plates, and perform a static incubation, and then we expand it respectively. And then this five-day assessment and six well shaking plates is actually our primary screening for the clone. And then from that, we select clones to expand into 125 mil shake flats, and we create a small working cell bank. So I just mentioned that we went through a primary screening as well as we followed it with a secondary screening. The primary and secondary screening are both a glucose only productivity assessment. And at that point, we also performed a stability assessment. And then followed by that, we went into the tertiary clone screening, which is a fed best process that we use efficient feed C plus. And from this, we selected the stable clone that is an XBHOS clone that produced greater than three grams per liter of IgG titer. From this clone, we performed multiple experiments to see how they worked in, or how it worked in adaptation and how it would work into a bioreactor. So as you can see, this is the same stable XBHOS clone. It was passaged every three to four days, and then the cells were seeded at 2E5 cells per mil in shake flask. So in red is the XBCHO expression medium, which is our control and then XBCHO stable production medium is shown in blue, and then two competitors, and the XBCHO, as you can see, the XBCHO stable production medium shows that there was no adaptation required and attained very similar growth with the control, again, the expression medium. And in addition to this, the cell growth is much higher than the competitor medium. 
<clears throat> so at this point, we went through the adaptation and we proved out that there really is no requirement for adaptation if you're going for expression medium into the stable production medium. So we went now into the AMBER-15 bioreactor. As you can see, this is a stable, the same stable XBHOS clone in an AMBER-15 in a fed batch process, again using the efficient feed C+, at a 2x concentration. And you can see that we, um, the competitor medium is also paired with the competitor feed. And it's important to note that in blue, which is the AGT of XBHO stable production medium, and in red, the liquid version of stable production medium, there is no variability between the two formats in growth. And that's important because generally speaking, you would develop your product in a liquid and then scale up into an AGT for your larger manufacturing needs. So again, the same exact study, and in this case, we're looking at what sort of IgG titer production did we receive. Again, between the two formats, the advanced granulation technology and the liquid, there is absolutely no variability between the formats and titer as well as the growth. And in addition to this, it also outperformed competitor medium. So once we started and looked at the adaptation results, and then we followed it by by looking at what kind of productivity did we get in a small bioreactor, we wanted to translate this into a larger bioreactor. <clears throat> so we used a 50 liter single use bioreactor as shown on the left. And this is again, the same stable XBHOS clone in a fed batch process using the XBCHO stable production medium AGT format with the efficient feed C plus at a 2X concentration. And the initial run seems to translate well from the small bioreactor without any process optimization or feed optimization. As you can see on the first graph, the viable cell density has a nice high peak density, and it holds on. And in the right graph, you can see that the IgG titer hits nearly 3 grams per liter of protein titer on day 14, showing that it is a scalable process, and this medium also is scalable. So in summary, XBCHO stable production medium is a scalable solution for stable protein production. It's a new medium that was introduced that facilitates a seamless transition from your transient needs into your stable protein expression in CHO cells. And again, it's important to reiterate that there's no adaptation required when going from transient expression in an XBCHO expression medium to the XBCHO stable production medium. The medium also supports large-scale bioproduction runs using the licensed high-density XBHOS cells. And again, it's available in a liquid and advanced granulation technology format. And if you would like to have a free one-liter sample of the XBHO stable production medium, please contact your Thermo Fisher scientific sales rep. And I would like to thank the R&D support team as well as our business support team. Thank you. Thank you, Shreya, for that informative presentation. We will now start the live Q&A portion of our webinar. If you have any questions you'd like to ask, please do so now. Just click on the Ask a Question drop box located on the far left of your presentation window, type your questions into that box that appear on the screen, and click the Send button. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for. So let's take a look at our incoming questions from our audience members, and welcome audience. Shreya, the first question coming in is, what is the difference between XBCHO stable production medium and the existing kit? So the existing kit that has this XBCHO expression medium is a transfection medium. And again, once you go through your transfection, at that point, any point post-transfection is when you can transfer into or transition into using the stable production medium. The reason for this is you can scale it up into a large bioreactor. Thank you. And when do you use XBCHO stable production medium? So again, you would use this at any point post-transfection. <clears throat> and thank you. And what vector do you recommend? Right now, the vector we are recommending is the PCDNA 3.3 or the PCDNA 3.4 vector. 
Thank you for that. And thank you, audience, for your incoming questions. Our next question from our audience is, is this kit suitable for commercial um, recombinant therapeutic protein production like Freedom Chow S kit? And here's the second part of that. Also, is it okay for GMP regulations? And last part of that is, in addition, I wonder, the plasmid used in this kit, does it include DHFR system for gene application? Oh, amplification, pardon me. So I, um, the I vector could... cannot be spoken about. It is um, proprietary. However, it is okay for CGMP regulations as far as, I don't know if that's a reference to the actual cells being used. I don't know if that's what is being asked about. Do you want me to repeat part of that? I, I can see the question. Um, okay. I think it's if it's according to the cell line, the XBHOS host cell line, yes, they are okay for CGMP regulations. Perfect, thank you. Our next question is, what selection system is being used to select the stable clones? Again, the vector is a proprietary vector that I cannot reveal that, unfortunately. Thank you. <clears throat> Our next question, is it more productive than Freedom Chow S kit, and which one would you suggest for commercial MAB production? That's a very good question. So the Freedom Choas kit is a great kit. However, the most important factor about this XPCHO family is if you're already using the XPCHO expression system kit and you've already gone through transient expression with that, that's when you can transition into your stable clone development needs. So it's integrated so you eliminate that step of having to switch your transfection medium and then production medium. And it's already, you, it's a time saving factor. Um, for what sort of monoclonal antibody pr production, which is better and more productive, it depends on your vector of choice as well as your gene of interest. Thank you. And again, I want to thank our audience members for their participation. And any questions not answered today, feel free to write them in, and they will be answered via email by the presenter. We have one more question coming in. Is the high expression of antibiotic-resistant genes a problem with regulatory authorities? Um, I do not think that that should be a problem. I, to my knowledge, it should not be a problem. Okay, thank you very much. And Shreya, do you have any closing remarks for our audience members before we close today? If anyone, again, would like a free one liter sample of our liquid XPCHO stable production medium, we are more than happy to supply that. And if there's more questions, feel free to contact myself. Perfect. Thank you, Shreya. And thank you very much for your presentation today and your important research. I'd also like to thank Thermo Fisher Scientific for making today's educational webcast possible. Before we go, I want to remind everyone that today's webcast will be available for on-demand viewing through May of 2019. Please share with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. Also, stay tuned for our next presentation, Strategies for High Titer Protein Expression Using the XBCHO and XB293 Transient Expression Systems presented by Dr. John Zamudo, the Director of Cell Biology Life Sciences Solution Group at Thermo Fisher Scientific. You don't want to miss out. That's all for now, and thank you for joining us. We hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye, and have a great day.